We have our lecture series at AccuTalk and Professor David Chan, who is one of the most senior faculty members here at Amherst College. We're very honored to have him. I see a lot of the students are here, and we have some of our guests also. So please feel free to ask questions when it's up to his question and answer time. Uh, the topic of the evening will be covered is what, David? Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> it's a very Taoist approach. No, it's uh, the three treasures and uh, I guess personal alchemy. Okay, so we will explain what these three treasures are <coughs> and the Taoist view of personal alchemy. Uh, we do also have an announcement to make that in July the 28th is the open house for some of you that want to make a note of that date. That's July 28th. We'll have open house for uh, anybody that's interested in the program. Uh, so, uh, David Chan is uh, a colleague of mine. I've known him for over 25 years. And I can say he's probably the most eloquent and uh, knowledgeable person in that field that I've met. He's also very dedicated in the profession. I believe he's the only teacher that I know that has been teaching for 25 years straight. So he's 100% dedicated to the profession and to the teaching and to sharing his knowledge. So uh, thank you for being here. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, let me start with a show of hands. How many people are not students and are beginning people? OK, so looks like we may be half and half or so. OK, so I will try to address on a very basic level, but I'll also I have a, a n number of people that kind of want some uh, pearls or nuggets that might be a little denser. So I'll try to do both. I'll try to juggle both. Um, I do a lot of juggling. So first of all, um, my name is Chan, and I am half Cantonese. Um, a lot of people look at me and don't know what to make of me. Um, and that's been true my whole life, apparently. Um, my mother is or was uh, Caucasian from Pennsylvania, and I grew up in uh, New York, Long Island, Long Island. Um, so let's see. My father was from Hong Kong, so that Cantonese and British together, Hong Kong is very familiar to me. I'm very comfortable with, with that kind of energy. Um, I was a psych major in college which has proved to be very useful. It's been very helpful in terms, of, uh, in terms of Chinese medicine. And I would say that I was raised a, uh, without any religious convictions. Uh, my parents were spiritual, but not particularly metaphysical. And I, I actually asked to go to Sunday school um, when I couldn't answer any of the Bible questions on Jeopardy. <laughs> you know, I thought, like, maybe my education is missing something. So uh, I did that for a while. And then in college, um, I kind of went from atheist to agnostic. Uh, and then that time was a very, I went sort of this counterculture energy. And Richard Alpert, who was a Harvard psychologist, uh, became Ram Das. And his book, Be Here Now, came out when I was probably a sophomore or a junior in college. And it was a profound moment for me to see a, um, you know, an East Coast Ivy League uh, psychologist that let his hair down and just kind of uh, uh, embraced his, uh, his woo-woo side, if you will. So uh, uh, that was a profound influence on me. Uh, my first job out of college was in a mental hospital in Connecticut, and I met my dearest friends there. I won't tell you if we had keys or not. Uh, we did have keys, but, but uh, um, and that, I only worked there about seven months, but we then went from Connecticut to Boulder, Colorado, where Naropa Institute had just opened up. And Ram Das was actually there. For, I, I caught his last day there. And that was my introduction to Tibetan Buddhism. Uh, I went for the Zen. I, was, uh, I had studied uh, Zen Buddhism, but uh, I started a uh, kind of a lifelong um, interaction with Tibetan Buddhism, which I really couldn't account for, but uh, 
there's a certain crazy wisdom in Tibetan Buddhism. It's a strange uh, 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 attraction, but I'm very happy to have done that. And about 10 years after college, uh, that time period, I went through a um, uh, kind of a half-life in uh, Berkeley, of all places, uh, and Taiwan. And you can't get two more different places. Um, a very kind of radical, anything goes, and a very kind of fascist uh, uh, Taiwan. Uh, with at that time, uh, anything that referred to Mao Zedong was was blackened out. Um, so it was an interesting time. But um, I spent my time in Taiwan um, teaching English as a second language, studying martial arts, Mandarin, calligraphy, Chinese cooking, anything I could, anything that was available in the culture. Uh, and in the in Berkeley, I st uh, basically t worked in mental hospitals and with disturbed teenagers, and um, got a lot of interesting parenting skills from from that. Uh, and you, what you realize from an experience like that is you want to do the job as best you can right in the beginning because cleaning up after mistakes, it's sort of like prevent the oil spill before it starts. Cleaning up afterwards is very, very difficult. And the same thing is true in terms of, uh, of children. Uh, let's see. So I guess that, oh, so I kind of went from, uh, I guess when you study acupuncture, I did have some metaphysical leanings, and I started to work with crystals. Um, but as I, as I was probably about 10, 12 years into the practice, I met a Taoist priest called Jeffrey Yuan. And um, through studying with him for the past 15 years or so, um, I realized that I'm a Taoist. So it didn't, I didn't like sign up, it just sort of happened over time. Um, and I think if you really study acupuncture, you realize that it comes from Taoism. Herbalism comes from Taoism. Ast Chinese astrology comes from Taoism. Feng Shui comes from Taoism. So uh, we owe a lot to, to the Taoists. So wh what I'll be expressing is the viewpoint of the Jade Purity School of, of Taoism. Okay. And I hope, uh, hope it makes sense to you. So I have billed this as, I believe, the three treasures of the San Bao. And they are Shen, Qi, and Jing. So let me start with Shen, usually, usually translated as spirit. And it actually has, part of the character is for, um, to reveal or to divine, implying something from heaven. And the other part of the character is an extension. So the extension of heaven onto earth. This is what the, the character of Shen means. Okay? So obviously we believe in spirit. Right? And part of this uh, belief system is also in reincarnation. 